Have you ever opened a research paper and immediately felt overwhelmed? Well, you're not alone. But what if you could read research papers faster, more intelligently, and even review them like a professional? The difference between struggling with research papers and mastering them isn't intelligence, it's strategy. Most people read research papers like novels, linearly from start to finish, and that's precisely why they fail. Today, I'm sharing with you the active reading framework I've taught to generations of my PhD students here at Cambridge. I'll teach you how to actively engage with research papers, assess their real value, and start building real expertise from day one. Welcome to Frank Stajano Explains. I'm a professor at the University of Cambridge. I have read, written and reviewed my fair share of research papers. And today I answer this excellent question from my viewer Saptarshi Sarkar, who writes, Hi, Professor. Can you share some tips on how to read research papers and get better at it? Also, how should we review research papers, e.g. as part of a review request for conference, where we have some related knowledge, but not great expertise? This is a very important question for graduate students, because reading and reviewing papers is really the bread and butter of a research. So let's get into it. Most people approach research papers passively, reading linearly without strategic questioning. And this can take a very long time if you only go past the formula after having fully understood it. You, know, you get stuck very easily doing that. And you should instead take an approach where you do several passes, where you understand more and more of the paper with each pass, and you only engage in later passes if you see that it's worth doing it. Readers may often confuse difficulty with importance. Ah, this is, is, is very complicated. It must be that the person who wrote it is, you know, Nobel Prize quality and I'm not worthy of their great intellect. That's not necessarily true. It could be that it's difficult to read because the guy who wrote it was not very good at explaining clearly. Difficulty of understanding the paper is not necessarily correlated with um, importance or significance of the paper or brilliance of the author, not at all. Um, and equally, the fact that the paper is easier to read doesn't mean that it's brilliant either. It, it just means that they're a person who is good at explaining. So you should separate these two axes and the one that is obviously more important is how significant is the paper? How uh, useful is that contribution? To science and are you able to filter through the presentation whether it's uh, easy or difficult and understand the significance of the paper and uh, it's actually difficult to evaluate papers meaningfully uh, especially papers that are not exactly in the narrow field that you specialize in unless you have some kind of structure technique to approach that and this is what I'm going to introduce you to. And it's crucial that you understand the difference between being able to say what's in the paper, uh, you know, reading to get the information out, being able to produce a summary of what the paper said, it's one thing, basic level, not that important, to reading for critical assessment, being able to give a judgment on the paper, being able to say, to say if, whether the paper is any good, right? That is what you should train towards, which is, of course, more difficult and requires a systematic approach that most people never learn, but also they don't often realize until trained that this is what they should be aiming for. It's not about being able to repeat what's in the paper. It's about being able to judge, classify the paper into average, very useful, not useful at all, not bother, not worth bothering uh, with this paper. So the first thing I suggest you do is to read actively rather than passively. And reading actively means prime yourself with questions before you read the paper so that you are reading with the purpose of answering those questions. So the question would say stuff like, uh, what 
do I think that the contribution of this paper is going to be? Sometimes well-written paper actually say that, you know, in the introduction they would say, okay, and uh, my claims are that in this paper I do X, Y, Z. Uh, and if they don't say it up front, then try to figure out from the various clues you get from the title of the paper, the abstract of the paper, the introduction of the paper, the conclusions of the paper, the various subtitles in the paper, titles of the sections and subsection. What is it that they are doing and what is it that they claim to have brought to the table that wasn't there before their paper? That would be like number one question. What's their, uh, what's the contribution? What's their approach? Is their approach any different from the approaches I've already heard about, read about, that attempted to solve this problem or a related problem? Have they just done a small variation on something that was already known or have they come up with something that nobody had thought about before and is dramatically different? It, was it the case that you know the previous thing, the uh, previous best known thing, uh, would only take uh, cubic time and now they can do it in n log n time, for example. That would be worth writing home about. Uh, and instead, if they've just you know, made it faster by a factor of 1.2, then you know, uh, <laughs> it's nowhere near as impressive. What kind of uh, background foundations do they build on? What s references do they cite that you already knew from having done something in that field? Um, what are the limitations of the approach that they choose and so on. So all these questions, you should try, you know, see the title of the paper. I have to read this paper. Why do you have to read this paper? Maybe because it's something you've been asked to review, maybe because your supervisor said this is something that uh, would help you with what you're trying to do. Or, or maybe you just found it, uh, someone uh, suggested, ah, this is in your area. What do you think about that? Can you tell me if this is any good? So try to come up with those questions as you approach the paper. So then try to make connections between this new paper and other papers that you have, you're already familiar with in uh, related areas that try to solve similar problems and see where you would rank them. I mean, this paper I already knew about. Yeah, I quite liked it, but it was difficult to follow and the method was quite complicated. If I had to implement it myself, mm, uh, I think it will require this many resources. This other method, if I were to implement, it looks, actually, it looks a lot easier, or it looks a lot more complicated, or uh, whatever. Just try to establish where the new paper stands with respect to the fixed points you already know from the papers you uh, are already familiar with. And try to engage with the claims of the authors instead of just passively accepting them. If they say, ah, now this is going to be much easier to deploy because, and you say, wait a minute, that's not true because it may be easier to install, but actually deploying means that everybody has to change that other version of the operating system or something like that. You know, if they claim something, don't take it at face value until you've reasoned about it and you, you've, you've validated it with what you know about the problem. So that's uh, your active reading approach. Now, the multiple passes that I mentioned. At the first pass, just don't go into the body text. Just use the, the, you know, the titles, the subtitles, uh, titles of the various sections, the various parts of the paper, uh, and the abstract, the introduction, and the conclusions, but none of the actual meat. And see how much you can get, how much of your answers you can uh, how, much, how many of your questions you can answer through scanning just that. And that is something that you should be able to do in not very long, maybe half an hour to an hour. And that is something that you should be in a position to do for any paper that comes across your desk. And then on the basis of that first scan, you decide whether it's worth going into um, deeper passes. So at the second uh, level, then you would start looking more carefully actually reading the text about, you know, what methodology they use, uh, what are their assumptions, what are the limitations of their approach, uh, how do we actually do it, does it convince me, and so on. But you're not attempting to understand every line, every equation, every, uh, every uh, source code fragment, uh, every graph, and so on. You just try to get the gist of what's happening 
and a feel for whether it's uh, it's worth it it's serious it's a contribution that's uh, going to bring something useful and then if it is if it is something that looks like ah that's a worthwhile paper or maybe if you are reviewing to decide whether to accept it or not then you have to go at the deepest level where you actually do want to understand every sentence and being able to criticize it. they're saying this but it's not right uh, I don't think that's supported by what they said in the previous paragraph or, or I think that contradicts something else that's uh, or been accepted in the literature and so on uh, sometimes it contradicts something in the literature because they have got a better answer than what was in the literature Th that's also important but you have to get to the stage where you can assess that at the deep level and so this leads us naturally to the um, third point which is that you must as I say read critically and evaluate and assess and um, in a sense judge or rate this paper it's very easy to say something was published in um, top tier journal or top tier conference and therefore ipse dixit it must be good otherwise they wouldn't have published it there but you if you're going to be a researcher you have to develop that ability yourself because someday some paper will come that someone just wrote and it hasn't been published somewhere yet and someone will ask you should it be published here because you are now on the program committee of that top journal or that top conference and you have to decide is this good enough to accept in this place and you can't say well what have other people said about it you are the one who have to say so if you're going to become a researcher if you're going to become a member of this peer community then you have to refine your own critical skills and uh, your judgment of whether this contribution you've identified from the paper uh, is actually bringing something to the table compared to what we already know that is significant sometimes there is a contribution but it's a small contribution sometimes there isn't a contribution what they claim is false or what they claim has already been done and some sometimes what they claim has already been done and they don't even know it and you have to say look there was this paper from 1976 already did that look you're you are insufficiently aware of prior art and you say that sorry you say that as a reviewer uh, and you have to mm, correct them of course you reject it but you say okay well uh, find out about stuff before you make up uh, your own inventions some other times there is some uh, novelty it's not very big sometimes there is a novelty and it is very big and it's easy to be very hesitant about awarding a high mark to something because ah, maybe I don't know if someone else had already found that so I'm going to be very cautious and say well yeah it's okay so so but I'm not going to be super enthusiastic because I would feel stupid if someone then someone else then said I oh, know but this, this had already been done before oh but there's a mistake that you couldn't spot and so on and so you have to develop some uh, self-confidence about your uh, critical ability and it does put you on the spot and it is easier perhaps to write the paper than to fairly criticize someone else's paper but that is part of becoming a researcher and if you uh, are always going to be too shy then uh, you're not going to become a researcher uh, I'm not suggesting by that that you should just be bold and go ahead with whatever your gut feeling is whether it is substantiated or not because that is also <laughs> totally wrong you have to refine your judgment by studying enough the literature that when you issue a criticism about oh this is insufficiently novel because there's this this and this then uh, you can substantiate your your claim and when you say this actually is quite novel then uh, you're happy to defend this and say well of all the things I've studied you know, up to uh, the conference we had last summer uh, I've never seen anything like that this is actually a major improvement so that is difficult that's perhaps the hardest part of all this uh, and the way I suggest you go about it is to um, I mean if, you, if you're asking this question I presume you are a graduate student who has a supervisor a mentor who's going to take you towards getting your master or PhD and who sometimes feeds you things to review 
with the safety net that they're going to read and submit it under their name. And so if this is the case, then ask for this. Of course, it's more work for you, but ask for this as often as possible and write your review along the lines of what I suggested. And then ask for feedback from your supervisor about the review. Don't just let them submit and say, oh, my, my graduate student has done some of the work. That's great. I can spend the weekend with my family. Just l make them do some work back to you of giving you feedback on uh, the good or bad of your own review. Uh, did you identify all the important contributions of the paper? Did you correctly criticize the, th the claims that were incorrect and so on and so on? Um, and so through that refinement, that, that's why you can only make progress by having some supervisor who helps you improve. They give you feedback on what you do. So by challenging yourself to go through this exercise again and again, gradually you will become better at, um, at reviewing. And as you become better, then you will get more responsibilities, uh, as in at some point, instead of just being the minion of someone who submits a review under their name, uh, the review will be named for you. I mean, of course, reviews are, are anonymous, double-blind, and so on and so on. But you will be listed on the... Uh, on the program committee as one of the reviewers, even though they will not disclose which reviews were written by you. And so your status will grow, you will be invited to uh, take part in the organization of other conferences and so on and so on, and you will eventually become a peer member of this research community. So um, the uh, framework I suggest is, first of all, read actively. Don't just take the words from beginning to end, ask questions before you engage with the text and uh, try to read the text as a way to answer the questions that you have prepared. And read in layers, do several passes. The first pass should be the quickest and the one that just decides where to put it in a bin where you say it's useful, it's not useful. And further passes go in greater depth as required. And then assess and judge rather than just summarize. You don't want to take what they say at face value, you want to give your assessment, your opinion of whether it's any good. And this mastery at this game comes from practice, deliberate practice, receiving feedback from someone with greater expertise than you, not just applying techniques or applying framework. You have to do it, you have to keep doing, make mistakes, have the mistakes corrected, understand your mistakes. Uh, not redo them the next time and so on. So I encourage you to apply this method that I just described to a paper this week and to share your critical assessment with your supervisor, with your mentor, and then uh, come back here and post a comment about how it went. And if you say parchment in your comment, then I will know that you were here until the end of the video, which I always appreciate. Becoming an effective research reader is a professional skill that is really at the foundation of your PhD and one that compounds in value throughout your career. Stick a thumbs up on this video if it helped you and becoming proficient at reading and evaluating papers will also teach you how a good paper is written and how you should structure the papers that you write for yourself. If you want to help your reviewers, consider them good papers. And I think you will also like this other video on another crucial skill for a research. Best wishes, thank you for watching and we'll meet again in the next video.